thank you for that invitation. Right, lots of other people are going to talk about... Um, can we kill the light? <laughs> Can't see anything. Lots of gonna, people are going to talk about organisational nature conservation. And I didn't want to talk about my own organisation. You can go to the website and find out all that information if you want to. You can come and visit us and find out all that information. I wanted to talk to you about something that's very close to my heart, which is the value of nature. And I've been making a big study into the value of nature. I've been helping write some books on the value of nature. I've studied the economics and academic um, history of the value of nature and I've even made a documentary we hope will be aired on the value of nature and I, I hope I, I've already been booked into the next Lib Dems conference to give this speech it'll be a bit longer than this one because I haven't got that much time um, but I have been um, talking about the value of nature and it's something very very close to my heart because what is the value of nature I know I have valued nature and first of all We've got to ask the question is, what is nature? Well, we know nature is the birds, the bees. It's the little deer running across. Um, it's, it's lots of little insects that are around us. But nature's much more than that. As you learn about nature, you find out the amazing ecological relationships. The, the relationship between, say, a wild boar and an oak tree, and how an oak tree cannot have any genetic diversity, it can't have healthy progeny without the wild boar transporting the acorn. And if we take the wild boar away, and the only seed carriers that are left can't take the acorns any distance, you don't have genetic diversity. And in 5,000 years' time, oak trees will become inbred, and they'll start becoming less fit and dying out. I know our brains can't think on those time frames, but I'm hoping the audience here can have a better um, idea of thinking about longevity than in the past. So then, when you start seeing what is nature, it's far more complex. All the, the ecological services of nature, things like drainage of land, the complex relationships of how nature helps us, how sunlight is processed, how oxygen is produced, the abiotic factors as are known. If you look at a carbon cycle, how carbon dioxide is released into the air through decay or through geological exposure, you can have carbon cycles just over a few years where you burn a tree and then a tree grows again and absorbs that carbon, or you can have carbon cycles over millions, hundreds of millions of years as it's absorbed into rock and then as you get more volcanic activity. And these are the things that change our climate. So nature is much more than just a bird. It is all these things. So when we understand the complexity of nature, we can then try to understand value. What is value? Well, there's many things. Scientists say we've got three types of value. We've got psychological value. I value that bird. It's pretty. It's nice. I like to watch it. We can have sociological value. We as a society value these things. We can create organizations like the Wildlife Trusts or the RSPB. So we can value those organizations. We can create laws and vote for political parties. And then we look at economic value wildlife. And that's my interest, is economic value. How do we assess economic value of wildlife? At the moment, there's two schools of thought in economic circles. You have what's called donor and receiver economic values. At the moment, the, the economic value that society works on today is what's called receiver value, which is the neoclassical consensus that something is worth what you're prepared to pay for it. So if you want to save the Heath Retillery, you have to step into your pocket and hand out some cash. Yeah? It is a value, it is a transactional value, or as they like to say, exchange values. But then, 
if you want to value that butterfly, if you want to see it, I want to protect it, you might say there's other ways of valuing it. And that's where, if we go back in history and learn from classical economists, you can look at things like the labor equivalent value, how much um, labor will be taken to, say, replace a, a butterfly that's been made extinct, or replace, say, um, the clean water that's been polluted. That's another labor equivalent. So a lot of people have been redeveloping um, some of these concepts in environmental economics trying to place values on all of wildlife and the ecological services that nature give us. And that is very complicated. There was a recent government report just a couple of weeks ago trying to do that. But I say it's a lot of hogwash because it's too complicated. Even though it's very well-meaning that we try to place a value on nature. So now that we can go through and understand nature's got values. How, what's the process of valuing nature? How does society value nature to actually protect it? And I, I've come up with some my own ideas on this. I think you have to make nature valueless to value it. Now that sounds mad, doesn't it? But in today's economic uh, world, the value of nature is often the ability to destroy it. And the way our laws are set and the way our taxation structure is set means that if you destroy a thing or abuse a thing, you can have the profit from that without any form of tax. Yes, there are many laws on pollution and wildlife now that do protect wildlife. But in essence, the reason wildlife is disappearing from us is because any freeholder or an owner of the right to extract minerals is free to take the value of that destroyed wildlife. If you own land and you get a right to convert that land to housing or a factory, if you own land you can turn it into an intensively farmed field, there is no cost to society. There's no cost to you. You get all those profits tax free. And that is the problem with the valuation of wildlife. And if we are ever going to solve that problem, we have to look at how we tax things. Now, there was a great economist called Henry George who looked at these things about 140 years ago. And even if you go before Henry George, you had David Ricardo, who's probably the greatest economist Britain's ever produced, and Adam Smith before him, who looked into these matters as well. And they said, the way you solve all these problems is to tax the economic value of natural resources. And that is the way we can protect wildlife. And that's what I've been campaigning on and developing my theories on for, for some years now, is how do we implement taxation on natural resources, on land, on people who abuse nature by uh, taking too much water out of the system, put a rent on water extraction. And because nature is a complex beast that needs to exist for hundreds and thousands of years. It has to be a yearly thing. You cannot place a true value on something just in one year. I can destroy that part of nature for X amount of money because we need to hand it on to our children. It has to be a yearly rent. So everybody who abuses nature has to pay a rental value of that abuse. And that's how I think you can solve um, all of the problems at no cost to the taxpayer. It's a complex, complex theory, and it goes into huge detail, and it's much more complicated than, than what I've said. So when you look at it moralistically, we change from a society that says, I own something, to change to a society where I owe, if I own land, for it, completely my own preserve to do with as I will, 
I have an obligation to the rest of society. If I own the right to extract oil and I burn it in my car, I have an obligation, and that is the rental charge that I have to pay to the government. And, and that, of course, means we can get rid of all the harmful taxes, like income tax, national insurance, VAT, that stop us doing all the things we really want to do, which is human trade, intellectual and economic exchange, and working hard and having the benefits of our work. So that's what I've been working on and learning about how we do value nature and how we could value nature for many years to come.